Hello everyone, my name is Ronak and you are watching VectorWart. So in today's video, we will take a look at triggers and behaviors in WPF uh, using Visual Studio Blend. So without any further ado, let's get started. So for those uh, who haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. It means a lot. So today's topic is about triggers and behaviors. So I have uh, got a lot of questions uh, in my comments asking they cannot see the triggers panel in uh, Visual Studio Blend. And after uh, doing a bit of research, I see that uh, the latest version of Visual Studio has uh, this option removed. So let's talk about how we can implement triggers and what are the alternatives that we can use uh, to animate storyboards. So let's start first by creating a new project and like always uh, we'll select WPF app with .NET Framework and click on next. Let's give this project a name. So we have our project loaded. Let me build the solution. Okay, I see an error. If you also uh, get this error uh, where we uh, get an error called nullable value enables C sharp 7.3 and change the language version to 8.0 or greater. Uh, there's a simple fix that you need to do. Uh, let's go to the uh, project folder and open the csproj file and let's add a language version tag over here and I've set the value of this uh, to preview save this file and close this and let's reload our project and let's see if this error goes away or not. And the build has succeeded and let's start the project. And yes, so uh, let's start uh, by creating a simple animation. So to do that, let's add a ellipse maybe. change this ellipse property let's change the fill to red and the stroke also to red and and just create a simple animation by clicking on this icon over here to add a storyboard and let's uh, keep the name as a storyboard one and click on ok and on the first keyframe uh, the ellipse is on this position and on the 0.5 uh, keyframe uh, I will move this ellipse to a different position changing this position uh, will add a keyframe on the timeline so let me do that okay so if I run this animation now you see that the ball or the ellipse move or change its position so this is a simple animation so let me stop the recording here and previously where in uh, older versions of uh, Visual Studio Blend or Visual Studio you used to see not Visual Studio but Blend you used to see an option here to add the triggers panel uh, but unfortunately it has been removed from uh, uh, Visual Studio Blend so we will take an approach to run this storyboard from using the uh, code and that would be to add a windows trigger window trigger and inside this trigger we'll need to um, invoke the storyboard to do that uh, let me also add a button here just for uh, a better control uh, let me add 
a name to this button. Let's say btn go and uh, let's change the content also to go. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our triggers section and inside this trigger, we will add an event trigger and uh, we'll add a routed event property and this will be the button dot click and uh, we'll add a source property source name and uh, here you need to provide the source name uh, that is the btn go and once that is done you can close the tag and inside this event trigger we need to have the begin storyboard tag which will begin the storyboard we have other uh, tags as well like stop storyboard pause or resume storyboard but uh, here i'm going to use the begin storyboard to begin the animation and you need to provide the storyboard property and that would be inside it will be a binding so it's a static resource and we need to provide the storyboard name and once that is done you can close the uh, tag now uh, this uh, animation will be triggered uh, on click of the uh, button btn go so let me run this application and see uh, let's see it in action so here is our uh, ellipse and on click of this button you see that I have uh, triggered the uh, animation using a simple event trigger. So there are uh, other options as well. You can add this event trigger inside the button by using this uh, button dot triggers. because I have closed this and now inside this button you can add a button dot trigger and inside this button trigger we can add our event trigger so uh, the same thing uh, let's remove this part from here or we can let's uh, let's comment this out and let's take the event trigger from here and paste it within the uh, button and uh, let's run this and now you will see that uh, it performs the similar operation as we uh, did only thing is that we did it on a button uh, control level and not the window level we can also um, set the uh, animation to run uh, when the window loads so let me comment this out and uh, go to our windows trigger here let me uncomment this and let's change the routed uh, event to framework dot loaded and let's remove this source So it's framework element dot loaded and let's run this application one last time and you'll see that the animation has started once the uh, window was loaded so um, um, now uh, there is this other option to trigger such animations or storyboards uh, in visual studio blend and that would be the behaviors so uh, XAML behaviors for WPF is an easy to use means of adding common and reusable interactivity to your WPF applications with minimal code uh, and to 
add these behaviors uh, in our project we need to add the NuGet package called microsoft.saml.behaviors.wpf to our project so let's see how we can uh, do it and let's uh, click on this assets uh, panel over here and here you will see uh, the behaviors and here uh, to see these behaviors or to use these behaviors it asks us to install the behaviors nuget package which i just talked about you can also do it by going to tools nuget package manager and uh, install that package but i'll do it by cl just clicking on this but uh, link over here and clicking this uh, will install the nuget package necessary for adding behaviors to our project so uh, as you can see we have uh, 22 uh, behaviors uh, added to our project i will not uh, be touching on uh, all of these uh, types of behaviors but we will let's see one of them um, so here um, we have our event trigger i am going to remove this section which will animate uh, our control and also remove the uh, triggers inside the button and let me minimize this go back to our window over here and uh, let's add this behavior called control storyboard action uh, so as the name suggests it is used to trigger the storyboard action so let so uh, let me add this control to my uh, window uh, or the grid so let's select the grid and double click on this control and now uh, now all you have to do is select this and go to its properties and inside these properties you need to uh, first select the store control storyboard property option and let's select it to play you have several other options like play play stop toggle play pause pause resume and skip to fail so these are all the storyboard uh, options so le uh, let me select on uh, this option which is called play and then uh, we get an option to select the storyboard so if you have created storyboards you will uh, be able to select it over here so i have selected storyboard one and um, then we have is enabled property and the type of trigger is an event trigger and what is the source uh, that triggers this animation so the source name uh, is uh, the button go which i get to select by using this browse functionality and select ok and then uh, a source object so this is not necessary uh, so you can skip that and then what is the event name so right now the event name is set to loaded you can uh, go and select this button base dot click option uh, which will uh, trigger this uh, storyboard on click of a button you can also uh, change the source name to uh, window and then change the event uh, name to loaded and on click on load of the window uh, the animation will be fired so all the after changing these properties here uh, you will see uh, uh, these uh, interactions uh, or triggers added to the uh, grid and you, as you see here uh, we have all the options in the XAML that we selected in the properties um, let me run this application and let's see it in action so let me go ahead and click on this button and uh, as you can see we, the animation run uh, ran successfully just by using these behaviors these uh, let me stop the application once and go through the uh, behaviors that are available so here you can see from the start we can active state action activate state action uh, trigger or a behavior uh, wh which will allow you to change states uh, of the controls then you have change property action you have uh, uh, go to state action you have invoke command action you can invoke commands uh, of type i command uh, from this behavior then you can uh, use this launch uri or file action you can launch files or uh, a folder from this so let's let's try one of these uh, so let me add this to our grid 
and uh, it's very simple so let's go to properties and here you can see it is asking for a path so let's uh, give it a path so let me copy this and just paste it over here and uh, what is the event trigger that happens uh, so the event trigger is the source name is the button or let's say the source name is the ellipse because the button is already tied to our uh, animation so let me select this ellipse here and uh, what what will happen um, is when i perform the click option of the or the mouse down on this uh, uh, ellipse uh, this trigger will fire and open this path so let me run this application so when i click on this ellipse the event trigger will fire and open the path that i have provided in the path property so here you can see uh, it opened the uh, path likewise you can give uh, the file path or a file name uh, there with the path and it will open the file for you so these are some of the behaviors that are available uh, in um, uh, wpf uh, in the latest version and you can make use of these uh, behaviors so hope you all like watching this video if you do please give this video a thumbs up like share and do subscribe to my channel till then bye bye